Hi, VincorWeather.com, meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Thursday, December 21st. Well, very interesting weather patterns shaping up as we head towards Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Of course, Christmas Eve is on Sunday and Christmas Day on Monday. It looks like we'll have a mild and wet day on Saturday in the Mid-Atlantic region uh, as a cold frontal system arrives in the area. Low pressure will ride up along that frontal boundary zone. It'll turn colder on Sunday, and then there are signs that a storm will form somewhere along the mid-Atlantic coastline later Sunday into Sunday night, perhaps even into Monday, with the threat of rain changing to snow in the I-95 corridor, especially in areas uh, north of the Pennsylvania-Maryland border. There are mixed signals going on between the computer forecast models, but we'll talk about the reasons why I, I favor the idea of a coastal storm forming in the Sunday-Monday time frame. And again, it could throw a touch of snow in the I-95 car, and that would be a nice touch because it would most likely occur in the early morning hours on Christmas morning. First of all, in terms of cyclogenesis, which is just a technical term for storm development, couple things meteorologists like to look for. First of all, a boundary zone. This is usually in reference to a temperature boundary zone or a frontal boundary zone. It can be humidity boundary zone, sometimes referred to as a dry line. Again, these are the factors involved in whether or not a storm can develop in a particular area. So first and foremost, a boundary zone. Second, and perhaps even uh, as important as the first factor here, is upward motion. Weather forecasters are always looking for areas of upward motion. Uh, that is uh, where you can uh, have cloud formation and ultimately precipitation formation. For example, you can have air simply flowing up a mountainside. That leads to some upward motion. On a summer afternoon, you, the sun will heat the ground. That, in turn, results in warm air updrafts, which can lead to afternoon clouds or perhaps thunderstorms. Those first couple of examples are rather small scale. On a more large scale uh, scenario, meteorologists like to focus in on the upper air jet streaks, for example, or a prime area where there can be enough upward motion to help create a storm down at the surface level. And indeed, I think that is the scenario setting up here along the uh, mid-Atlantic coastline in the Sunday-Monday time frame. Well, let's kind of start off with a little bit of a Meteorology 101 lesson on cyclogenesis. Actually, it's probably more like Meteo 201 or Meteo 301, the second or third year level, if I remember my days at Penn State. First of all, in terms of a boundary zone, this time of the year, a natural boundary zone occurs right at the coastline here because of the temperature difference between the colder land and the relatively warm waters of the western Atlantic. So right off the bat, we have kind of a natural boundary zone in terms of temperature here in the uh, mid-Atlantic coastal plain. Second of all, for this particular upcoming scenario, we have a cold frontal system that will be approaching. It'll be uh, uh, moving in this fashion from northwest to southeast during the day on Saturday. Again, low pressure will ride up along that frontal boundary zone. Ultimately, it tends to uh, stall out as it ar arrives at the coastal region. So because of that frontal boundary zone will have colder air to the west, warmer air to the east. A couple of ways we have certainly a boundary zone. First of all, the natural because of the land versus water feature. And second of all, we have a cold frontal system that will be tending to slow down or even stall out as it arrives near the east coast. Now, let's clear away those lines and get to the upward motion part of this. First of all, a jet stream can be looked at in terms of quadrants. There are th this, this is an example of a jet streak over the middle part of the country where there's uh, higher winds than surrounding areas and we can separate that into four quadrants and uh, uh, typically there's upward motion in what's called the left exit and right entrance region of a jet streak and downward motion in the other two quadrants. So this is a kind of a large-scale example of a jet streak. Of course, this is moving along in the overall upper-level flow pattern. So it may be over the central U.S. on uh, this particular day and the next day over the mid-Atlantic region. And these upward and downward quadrants will translate along with that jet streak. The reason there's upward motion here, uh, there's 
divergence in the upper part of the atmosphere and convergence in the lower part of the atmosphere in this particular part of the jet streak as it advances from west to east and we will indeed have a very impressive looking jet streak in the mid-Atlantic region in the latter part of Sunday, Sunday night, early Monday time frame and a, uh, that combined with a boundary zone that's setting up along the east coast I think favors the idea of cyclogenesis or storm development. Now in terms of rain versus snow, colder air will come filtering into the I-95 car behind the frontal system on Sunday. It doesn't come flooding in as that front tends to stall out near the east coast. It comes filtering in. So it will be a fight to get cold enough for snow in the I-95 corridor uh, if indeed this storm does form along the uh, mid-Atlantic coastline. Certainly there is a chance for rain changing to snow, especially again from Pennsylvania-Maryland border and points north and east and could lead to a touch of snow on the ground by early uh, Christmas morning in places like Philadelphia, New York City, perhaps even just south of the Pennsylvania-Maryland border and we'll of course fine-tune that over the next couple of days. Well, let's now take a look at the 500 millibar forecast maps. This happens to be from the Canadian model. The European model tends to agree with this particular uh, scenario. And again, we're, we're focusing it on these areas that we call vorticity maxima, basically jet streaks in the upper part of the atmosphere. That, again, is where you get a large-scale upward motion uh, that can lead to surface storms and that I think it will be the scenario here. We'll, we'll focus in on this particular region right here. This is the forecast map from last night's Canadian model run for Saturday morning. So we're talking Saturday morning. This is a very impressive uh, vorticity maximum or jet streak down here across the south central US. This is actually going to be associated with that low pressure system that rides up along the Saturday frontal system. Uh, and will be mild ahead of that front with rain associated with this particular feature. But this is the area right here that we'll focus in on over the next couple of minutes. And this is uh, the jet streak that can indeed lead to a storm formation along the mid-Atlantic coastline Sunday into Monday. Let's push ahead in six-hour increments here. These maps available on tropicaltidbits.com. Saturday afternoon. Saturday evening, this particular system riding up along an advancing frontal system causing some rain in mild conditions in DC, Philadelphia, New York City on Saturday. Then that frontal system slides through and here is our next jet streak. These wind barbs here show the winds are stronger here in this particular region highlighted in yellow here, a vorticity maximum. The upper level low is situated up over central Canada. Let's keep now moving forward here and what happens is the upper level low over central Canada has this jet streak starting to really amplify at this time, amplify at this time at the base of this upper level trough and this is Sunday evening as we go into late Sunday night and then early Monday morning here we go a very impressive looking feature here kind of a negatively tilted orientation to this trough axis again upper level low situated over south central Canada and the trough axis that extends from that upper level low to this vortex tends to orient itself by Monday morning, Christmas morning in a northwest to southeast fashion what we call a negatively tilted uh, trough axis this is that jet streak we pointed to before with upward motion on the left exit side and the right entrance side of this protect particular jet streak as it interacts with that boundary zone later Sunday, Sunday night, Monday, a storm should form right in this region right here along the mid-Atlantic coastline. Again, temperatures will be marginally cold for snow. It looks like it'll uh, perhaps be a rain event changing the snow. Maybe the last stages of, of this event, Sunday night, early Monday, will be in the form of snow, especially Pennsylvania, Maryland border on north and east. So again, Signs point to cyclogenesis or storm formation along the mid-Atlantic coastline in the Sunday-Monday time frame. Colder air starts to filter in on Sunday and it could result in a rain changing to snow scenario. Parts of the I-95 corridor, primarily Pennsylvania-Maryland border on north and east, can get a little bit of snow on the ground by Christmas morning. Once this low pressure area uh, moves farther to the north and east up into New England. The cold air, instead of filtering in, will actually pour in 
to the mid-Atlantic region. That frontal system will be shunted far to the south and east. Cold air comes pouring in later Monday, and by Tuesday and Wednesday, we're in a very cold pattern here. Probably high temperatures at or below freezing in the I-95 corridor by uh, Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. By the way, another snow threat possible at the end of next week. So again, we'll uh, monitor this situation over the next couple of days, but cyclogenesis or storm formation possible along the mid-Atlantic coastline. Signs point to it in terms of, <coughs> excuse me, the boundary zone and the upper motion associated with this impressive jet streak could lead to a rain changing the snow scenario in parts of the I-95 corridor. That's it for now. For VencorWeather.com, I'm meteorologist Paul Orion.